So while you wait, I'm just gonna sing, I love you. verse 4 and it says but let patience have her perfect work so that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing may God add a blessing to the hearing reading and doing of his holy word look at your neighbor for a moment and say neighbor I got a question for you do you have all of the ingredients and then I want you to tell him you are the missing ingredient now, come on, if you know that you're the missing ingredient, come on, let's give God praise. James chapter 1, verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When I begin to look at the word patience, I, I begin to realize that a lot of us don't have a lot of it. We live in a microwave, as they would say, generation. We want things quick, fast, and in a hurry. And in this time in my transition from moving from the apartment to the house that we're now living in, we didn't have a microwave. So I realized that in order for me to heat something up, I had to wait just a little bit longer because I had to take the food out of the refrigerator, put the food in the pot, and then let the pot warm it up. And that took some time. 
So this week, what I spent my time doing last night up until about 3 o'clock this morning, I woke up, I up doing it, is I was putting up the over-the-stove, over the, uh, the what they call over-the-range microwave. So I was putting up the microwave so you know I could get things done just a little bit quicker and get it done a little bit faster. But one thing I realized, a difference between using, because I really don't use the oven like that to warm up food unless it's something that I really, you know, desire for it to be warmed up that way, such as chicken. I'm not going to put chicken in the microwave. That, that just, you know, it tastes soggy and all the other stuff. But one thing that I realized, the difference between the microwave food and the oven food is the oven food tastes a whole lot better. Can I get a witness in here that the, oven, that, the, that the oven food, it just tastes a whole lot better? Unless you're dealing with, you know, I know there are exceptions to it, unless you're dealing with something like leftovers where the season had to sit over just a little bit. That's that patience, all right, sitting so that season having to sit there a little bit longer uh, than, it, than it usually would. And you, then you put it in the microwave, but there was still a process of waiting for that thing to come into full fruition. Amen. So, you know, we have the difference between the oven generation and the microwave generation. The oven stuff, it takes a whole lot more time, and it tastes a whole lot better. It has a season. It's been all, all the way melted all the way through. The heat is all the way through it. But we have to have that patience and not take it out too early. For if we take something out the oven too early, such as a cake, what is the cake going to do? It's going to fall, right? So we have to have a little bit more patience when it comes down to even such things such as cooking, even the meals that we eat. Some things we are willing to wait for, and some things are worth the wait. Anybody know that some things are worth the wait? That thing that you've been praying for, the thing that you've been asking God for, it is worth the wait. One day I was driving out of my apartment complex, and I realized that there was not a stop sign there, but I realized that we stopped anyway. And I began to ask myself, why is it that we stop when we come out of this apartment complex and, and, and there's no stop sign? Usually signs indicate something that we ought to do, right? If you see a stop sign, what you going to do? If you see a yield sign, what you going to do? If you see a yellow light, what you going to do? And when you see a green light, what you going to do? You're going to go, right? So as I was coming out of my apartment complex, something hit me. You know, I got a revelation. And as I was coming out, it came to me that sometimes you have to wait in order to see what's coming. Look at somebody and say, sometimes you got to wait so you can see what's coming. And I can decree and declare on tonight that you have been in that holding position. You have been in that waiting place because God's got some blessings getting ready to come to your house. God's got some miracles getting ready to come to your house. But still wait for it because everything that looks like a blessing is not a blessing. Everything that looks like it's from God may not be from God because not only does God hear our prayers, but guess who else will hear your prayer? Yeah, you got an adversary that's listening, waiting to, you know, prompt you, waiting to give you that deceptive thing. And sometimes if we're not patient, we will catch ourselves in a situation that we should not be in because we did not wait on God to bring it to our fruition. Being patient is something that is not innate. It is not something that we do on the automatic. But it's something that we have to learn to do. It's something that life gives to, you know, we have to go through life circumstances. That's why early in the scripture in James chapter 1, it says, Think of it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trials that come to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But do what instead? Come on, help me out here. What does it say do? Come on, say it loud. I'm a school teacher, so I get, you know, passionate about it. Say it loud. What does it say? Count it all joy when you enter into divers temptation, knowing that the trying of your peace worketh patience. So therefore, we have to begin to let God work in our lives, work in our situations and circumstances. Because I come to tell you right now that the enemy, he desires for you to be in a, in a, in a desperate place. He wants you to get to that place to where you are so desperate that he is willing to take everything from you. The Bible says that the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. And if the enemy can come in and kill, steal, and destroy, guess what? That is exactly what 
what he would do because the Bible says he has a desire. And that desire is to sift you as wheat. Amen. Begin to take everything from you little by little. And the Bible warns us and it tells us to not worry so much about the big foxes because it's those little foxes that will destroy the roots. So we got to watch our roots. What are we grounded in? What are we standing firm in? What soil are you in? Look at your name and ask your neighbor, what soil are you planted in? Are you planted in the rocky soil? Are you planted in the firm soil? What ground are you planted in? The Bible says, I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. And I believe that God, I'm going to say it again, I say it all the time, has given you an assignment to fulfill your purpose in order to reach your destiny. And a lot of times as we own an assignment, the enemy will come in and he will try to distract us. He will try to come in and knock us off of our course. He he will try to come in and confuse our mind. He will get into our homes. He will get into our jobs. He will get into our into our families. He will even try to get into our marriage. But we have to have the spirit of discernment so that we would know when the enemy is coming in. The Bible says when he comes in like a flood that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So therefore if God is lifting up a standard against him. There is nothing and no victory that the enemy can claim because God has already put up a standard in the midst of your trouble. He's already put up a standard in the midst of your turmoil. You've been up all night long. You've been pacing the floor. But God is saying, think of it not strange when the enemy has come to you. Don't think it strange that when people are talking about you. Think of it not strange when your best friend stabs you in your back. Think of it not strange, young people. Uh, those of you who are watching online, think of it not strange when your co-workers and your teachers are giving you a hard time because God has made an investment inside of you. God has put a treasure down on the inside of you. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels and the surpassing greatness may be of him and not of ourselves. God has invested something in you just so that God can get the glory. Hallelujah. So that God can get the glory out of your life. He put a gift down on the inside of you so that God can get the glory. He put that song down in your heart so that God can get the glory. The angel said, why is it that you care about man so much? Oh, but then you got to go and look into your word and you realize that angels, they don't have a testimony. Oh, but God, what he did for man was he redeemed us when he died on the cross. Why do you care about man so much? I come to tell you that God cares about his investment. If we begin to look in the book of Genesis, if we begin to look in, chapter, in chapters 1 and 2, it tells us that when God, he made everything, when he began to make and form everything, he made the world in seven days. And the Bible says on the seventh day, he rested, but on the sixth day, what he did was he began to make man and form man out of the clay of the ground. And what he did was he took the man out of the clay of the ground. He began to breathe into man the breath of life. And the Bible says that man became a living soul. He took his time when he made man. That's why in the book of Psalms it says that I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. You have no reason to be insecure. You have no reason to be uh, felt like to feel like you are less than because God took his precious time when he made you. In Jeremiah chapter 11 for, uh, in, the, in the book of Jeremiah it tells us that when he formed man with God God knows us he said I knew you when you were formed in your mother's belly I knew everything about you he knows the number of hairs on your head so I'm coming to tell you that no matter what it is that you're going through God cares about you not only does he cares about you not only does he care about you but God he said if I did a thing if I begin to start a thing, then shall I complete it. Therefore, if God has started a thing in you. Therefore, he's going to take it out all the way to the very end. That's why you cannot die until the promises of God are fulfilled in your life. Tell somebody, say, I am a glory carrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a glory carrier. God put something down on the inside of you. That's why you're dealing with so much trouble because it's a treasure. Oh, uh, yeah. But, and when I was little, I began to, I, I, I was watching this show called Dora. 
And in Dora, that is this fox, and his name is Swiper. <laughs> and what Swiper would try to do, everything, as Dora was on her mission, as Dora was going, you know, to get to her destined place. Y'all know Dora, right? Anybody seen Dora? Raise your hand if you've seen Dora. All right? As she was on her way to her destined place, that out of the blue would come Swiper. And what Swiper would do is sometimes he would actually get what she had. But she'll have to go back and find it. But numerous times within the show, when Swiper will pop out of the bushes and try to attack her or try to get whatever she has, she, in her spiritual authority, would say, Swiper, no swiping. And not only did she use the phrase one time, but she would use it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then she would say it for the Son, Swiper, no swiping. And then she would say it again, Swiper, and she's had some authority when she had said it the third time, didn't she? She said, Swiper, no swiping. And I come to tell you that Swiper has been trying to come and take the treasure that God has put down on the inside of you. But when he comes to try to take that treasure, all you have to do is tell Swiper what? Swiper, no swiping. You cannot have my joy. For this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me and the world cannot take it away. Ah, this joy that I have, you cannot take my peace. For the Bible says that when he died on the cross, Jesus said, I leave with you my peace. Peace is not something that you have to ask for, but it's all you have to do is act, thank God for it because God has already given it to you. He said, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. That is a promise of God. So whatever the enemy is trying to take, whether it be your joy, whether it be your peace, whether it be your health, whether it be your finances, whatever it is, God already has it in his hand. Another thing that the enemy would try to do is he would try to get us into the wilderness. The Bible says that Jesus was led into the wilderness. He was seeking the Lord. He was praying and fasting. And as he was praying and fasting for 40 days, and for 40 days, the Bible says that the swiper, the tempter came. And he began to tempt Jesus, telling him, if you turn these stones into bread, I will give you the nation. But the thing about the enemy is he will promise you something that God has already given you. But you have to be patient. A lot of times you will see Jesus saying, it is not my time. It is not my time. It's not my time to move. I have to move and I have to shift with the, with the option of the Holy Spirit. But a lot of times when the enemy will try to, he will try to tempt you with something that God has already given you. And when he comes, all you have to do is just be like Jesus and use your weapon. Use the word of God. And Jesus said, for it, man does not live by bread alone, but by every what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. So therefore, we have to begin to use God's word when we begin to meet opposition. Use his word when we begin to meet trouble. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became light. The word became flesh, and flesh became light. And science light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So when you begin to speak God's word, it begin to activate it immediately at the speed faster than the speed of light. Faster than 186,000 miles per second. So when we begin to speak God's word, our words, it carries power. Our words carry presence. Prophetic implication with no geographical time-space limitation. Let me break that down for you. Your words, they carry power. Whatever you say, it's going to happen. Uh, they call this thing self-fulfilled prophecy. You can literally speak over your life. Thank God for pastor. Thank God for first lady. Thank God for evangelist Laura Emerson. Thank God for the prayer line and the prayer warriors. Oh, but when I get by myself, I know that I can activate the word of God. I can speak over my own life. I don't have to wait on the master prophet to come on a certain week and enter into a three-day revival. I know that when I come into the house of God, whoever and wherever I am, it carries presence. Wherever I am, I don't have 
to be in the White House to affect change, but I can be in my house on my couch and send a prayer to the White House and things have to change. Uh, they can with power, present, prophetic implication with no geographical time, space, limitation. I can speak to my tomorrow. Hallelujah. I can speak into my future and I can make my future align with the promises of God. Every illegal thing that the enemy is trying to put into my life, I have the power and the authority under the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to that thing. And that thing has to come into subjection with God's word. I dare just for a few seconds just to begin to speak to that mountain. The Bible says if you speak to that mountain, then it shall be cast into the sea. Begin to speak over your life. Come on, just begin to speak it into the atmosphere. Ah, speak those words into the atmosphere. For words, they don't just go into anywhere, but they wait until the most opportune time to fulfill themselves. I am healed. I am delivered. I am an overcomer. I am what God says I will do. I will do what God says I will do. I will go what God says I will go. Come on, speak over your life. Speak over your children. Speak over your family. Speak over your marriage. Oh, it has to come into alignment. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I begin to close, as I begin to close, I can recall the time I was at the grocery store and I was going to make what they call a banana pudding. Now, I didn't make the banana pudding like everybody else made it because it took too much time, you know, making a custard. So I made this whipped cream banana pudding. Oh, see, Sister Chris gave me that straight face like, you used the whipped cream, oh Lord. <laughs> but when I got home, I had everything I thought I needed. I had the banana pudding, instant banana pudding, I had the whipped cream, I had the milk, I didn't have to have any eggs. I had the cookies, the vanilla wafer cookies. But when I got back home, when I got ready to mix everything, I realized I forgot one main thing. Y'all know what that is? I forgot the bananas. <laughs> so I called it a cookie pudding. For all things work together. For the good to them that love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. I come to let you know that God knows everything. You can stand to your feet. I'm finished. But I want to know, is it that, do you have all the ingredients? God has prepared you with everything that you need to be successful. My testimony, I grew up without a father. My dad died in a tragic car accident before I was born. But look at me today. Very confident, a young man, striving to please the Lord in everything that I do. No, it was not easy. Yes, it was hard sometimes. But I'm telling you right now, all you needed was those 23 chromosomes from your mother, those 23 chromosomes from your father, and Jesus. And all you all they had to do is come together, make that zago. And God gave you everything that you needed to be successful in life. We don't make excuses for the things that God has for us. But God gave you an assignment. Whatever it is that God gave you, I don't know why I'm feeling this today. But whatever it is that God gave you, you are the missing ingredient. Whatever it is that God told you to do, whatever it is that God, whatever, whatever person God told you that, that he assigned you to, go and fulfill that assignment. Go and do whatever it is that God called you to do. Because God called you. Some of us, we walk around and I see so many young people, even at my school, what is it that you want to do with your life? They're in the 11th grade. Don't know what they want to do. Because they have not been exposed. Exposure brings about opportunity. Exposure brings about purpose. Exposure brings about a drive. So when we have that exposure, you may be that exposure that somebody's looking for. You may be God created us to be problem solvers, not to be a problem. But I believe that even as one of us have been called for a reason and for a purpose. I don't believe that there's such thing as a purposeless person, but it's something that you have to find within. And God will reveal it to you because 
If we go further down in James chapter 1, if we look at verse 5, if we look at verse 5, it tells us, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of who? God. That giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. So whatever it is that you need from God, if you're asking God, what is it that you have called me to do? What is it that you want me to do with my life? Where do, is there anybody in here that's asking God, where do I go from here? Hallelujah. During the pandemic, we've lost loved ones that we identified ourselves in. We lost people that we identified ourselves in. And we want to know, God, where, where do I go from here? If that's you, I just want you to meet me down here at the altar. And I will pray with you. Is that you? For those of you who are watching online and who are streaming and watching, you may be having that same question as you begin to watch and sit and watch the broadcast. What is it that God has called me to do? Well, the first thing he has called you to do is to be saved. That's the first step. Everybody just lift your hands. Even if you're watching and streaming online, just lift your hands and repeat after me. Lord, I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. But on today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you said that with conviction in your heart, you are saved. Come on, clap your hands. You are saved. You are saved. We praise and thank God for that. Everyone, thank you for visiting us on social media. Listen, if you are looking for a place where you can get the word of God for your everyday living, Holy Nation Church of Memphis is the place you need to be. Visit us on our social media. Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the Word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights and then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation and this is good ground. We go out into the communities and we believe in reaching the families uh, that is the parents the children the grandparents but we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry just go to giveify on, on on our website i think the information should be there at the bottom go out sow a seed this is good ground we look forward to seeing you at the nation soon team drivers wei is hiring Great pay, benefits, comfortable hours. Call now, if you want to get on the open road and see the country. Join the professionals, at Warhorse Enterprises Incorporated. Team drivers, with doubles and triples endorsements. Call now, for that change you have been looking for. Remember, W-E-I, where we treat you as family. Through technology, the local church can now become global. In Peace Mobile App has developed a state-of-the-art solution which can help your church move into that next level of ministry. Contact us today and schedule a Zoom demo for you and your team. Remember, In Peace is the app developed by Pastor.